Cycling in the park, brilliant exercise and a brilliant way to get some sunshine. But of course, cycling can also be dangerous. You could cycle into a hedge and hit your head. That's why I'm wearing this snazzy helmet. Or you could fall off and get a nasty graze on your knee. That's why I'm wearing these snazzy leggings. And finally, of course, you need to make sure your bike is properly maintained. You wouldn't want to squeeze your brakes and... Uh-oh! My brakes! Oh, my brakes! Oh. Oh. Well, thanks to my helmet, I don't have a head injury. Me neither, and thanks to these leggings, I haven't got any grazes. But on the downside, I think I've broken my arm. Sounds like an injury alert. So, what should you do with a broken arm? Should you A, run around the park screaming, Ah! My arm's broken! B, support it to stop it moving using your hand, some clothing or cushions. Or C, tell your teacher you won't be doing homework ever again. You guessed it, the answer is B. Here's how it's done. So, Chris, put your arm against your body, gently as you can. It really hurts if I move it. And then what we can do is use Chris's jumper to support the arm itself. So if I go very gently, try not to move oh. the arm. Now, remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency. Never do this on your own unless it is an emergency. Always try and find an adult. How's that? And can you now relax your arm? Yeah, that feels much better. Yeah. More comfortable, isn't it? So once he's feeling better, we can get him to hospital. He's going to be more comfortable when he's moving. We can get him x-rayed and see what's going on. So now it's this lot's turn to have a go. Ow! Ow! That's really good. So try and be very gentle with that arm. How's that feeling? Can you relax that arm now? Feels yeah. pretty good? Yeah, it feels a little bit. So obviously, for most of the time when you've got a broken arm, you don't need to call an ambulance. You can get in a car and go to a &E yourself. So, if you think you might have broken your arm, support it to stop it moving using your hand or clothing or cushions and tell an adult or call 999. Are you sure it's broken, Chris? Better safe than sorry, Zahn. Ouch! What started off as a normal day for our first patient has ended up with a trip to accident and emergency. Luckily, they've come to the right place. For you. In Liverpool, nine-year-old Charlie is in hospital with a painful elbow. See? Painful. So, what have you done to it? I tried to do a leaf frog, but my pants were too far down because he had heavy stuff in my pocket. You did what? He did a leapfrog, but his pants were too low down. Hang on, let's get this story straight. Charlie was on his way home from school with his cousin. They saw some bollards up ahead and had a great idea. That explains the light bulbs, then. They were going to leapfrog. That explains the frogs, then. Yes, but as Charlie leapt into the air, his trousers got caught and he fell smack onto the ground. Ouch. Enter Dr Sarah Piper. She'll examine that arm to find out what's wrong with it. We had all these in saw there. Yeah, it's a bit worried you might have broken this bone. The bottom of your humerus, which is this, this long bone here. My dream come true. Hey, your dream come true? Not playing for Liverpool or winning an Oscar? Broken bones can be pretty serious, you know. Well, an X-ray is the only way to find out if Charlie's dream really has come true. Keep nice and still there for me. The bone Charlie may have broken is the humerus. Running from the shoulder to the elbow, it's the fourth longest bone in your body. Often called the funny bone, the humerus has a nerve running through it very close to the skin. And that's why when you bang your elbow, you get that funny tingly sensation. With Charlie's x-rays done, Dr Sarah delivers her verdict. I'm afraid it is broken. Get in. <laughs> What's the matter with this boy? It looks like Charlie's crazy, I've broken my arm badly dream is alive and well. He's got a little break to humerus the long bone of his arm just above the elbow joint. It's not in too bad a position, so hopefully we'll be able to get away with just putting it in a cast. Shall we get in a cast now? Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, so it's the cast you wanted. Right, that's the dream. But hold on a moment. 
I just need to have a little word with the bone doctors just to make sure they're happy with the x-ray because sometimes they want to put wires in. Right. So sometimes it does need a little operation. I don't think an operation was part of the dream, but it could be the only way to make that arm heal properly. Still, his dream comes temporarily true with a temporary cast. But Charlie has to stay in hospital overnight so that the doctors can decide whether he'll need an operation or not. Ooh, that looks painful. Nine-year-old Charlie is in hospital with a broken elbow. He'd had a bright idea. There go the light bulbs again. They were going to leapfrog. And there go the frogs again. Yes, son. But as he jumped over the bollard, his trousers got caught and he fell onto his arm. A plaster cast was his dream, but surgery could also be on the cards. After a night in hospital, Charlie's waiting to find out whether he'll need that operation or not. Enter bone specialist, Dr. Jason Chan. He's been looking at the x-rays and has some news. Now looking at the uh, fracture, I think he's going to need an operation. OK. It might not be the news you wanted, Charlie, but this is the best plan to get that arm fixed. What we'll do is, once he's asleep under a general anaesthetic, we will manipulate the fracture to get the bones back into the right position, and then we'll have to hold them together with a couple of wires. So, theatre, here we come. With Charlie fast asleep, the surgical team use a live X-ray image to help them realign his elbow into position. Strapped up to keep it in place, Charlie's arm is now ready for those wires. This might be hard to watch, but Charlie can't feel a thing. And without the wires, the bones wouldn't set in the right position. With it all in place, it's time for some temporary plaster. Let's wrap him up. Operation over, Charlie will be going home, but he'll have to come back in a week's time to make sure everything is setting correctly. One week later, and Charlie's back for his checkup. It's been three weeks. What? It's been a week. Three. You done it last week. <laughs> it's been a week, but never mind. It's off to X-ray, so Dr. Chan can see how that elbow's healing. They look fine. Oh, thank God. It's good news for Charlie. Well, I'm happy with the position of the uh, fracture. The wires are doing their job, and the fracture's in a good position at the moment. The wires will be taken out in a few weeks' time, but now Dr. Chan gives Charlie the best news ever, his dream news, in fact. We're going to have to put you into another plaster, OK? So okay. we're going to get a full cast? Full cast today. Oh, yeah! High five, Doc. Oh, yeah. Come on, right. don't be shy. Time to give that old cast the elbow and replace it with a brand spanking new one. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Yeah. This is what Charlie wanted. Go on, give us a big wave. Well, that'll have to do. And there we are, all done. A full plaster cast with matching pink sling. It's what all the best dressed boys are wearing this year. Very stylish. It certainly is a dream come true. In Manchester, 11-year-old Akrima has come into hospital wearing a sling. I think I've broken my arm. Well, you're in the right place to find out. But first, how did it happen? Akrima was at school, it was PE, and everyone was doing gymnastics. And he was getting ready to make a champion move. Feeling like an Olympic pro, Akrima ran towards a bench, jumped high into the air and landed on both feet. It was a perfect 10, but suddenly he lost his balance and fell right over, right onto his arm. Ouch! Well, at least it doesn't look that badly hurt. Ah, oh, right, it's that arm. Yep, that doesn't look good. Luckily, Dr Nicola Penrose is on hand to help. Oh, that's it's a bit bendy, isn't it, that arm? But just having a quick glance underneath the sling that he's got on, it looks like his arm's, well, the wrong shape, really. It's, it's bendy. His arm's what we're calling a banana arm. Did she say...? Banana arm. Wow, a cream has got a banana arm. Where my arm's nice and straight, his arm's sort of going that way a little bit. There's a bit of a sag in the middle of it where it looks like he might have broken a, a bone or something. Time to find out for sure. It's off to X-ray. And there it is. Yep, definitely banana-y. There you go. All done. 
Church over to Dr Nicola to tell us what they found. He's broken both the bones in his forearm, basically. Wow, a double whammy. So these bones should be nice and straight and all pointing the same direction, but they're not. They're bendy and they're snapped in the middle. That is one impressive X-ray, but what's even more impressive is how it looks in real life. And this arm goes woo, doesn't it? It's all bendy there. Now, the type of break a creamer has will require an operation to fix it. Otherwise, the bones won't set in a normal position, and we don't want him to have that banana arm forever. Told me if I don't get it fixed and it heals like this, I won't be able to turn my hand and use my hand. Well, a creamer doesn't look too happy, but that operation means he'll have a fully functioning arm. We'll be back later to see how he gets on. <laughs> At Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, 10-year-old Yasin was rushed to accident and emergency after he slipped and landed on his elbow. After um, I fell, my elbow looked swollen. This is the good elbow, and this is the swollen elbow. Now, how did this happen? It was break time, and Yasin was racing with his friend and his twin brother. Yasin sped towards the finish line. He could see the ribbon approaching. He dreamt of winning. Nice trophy. Bit big. When suddenly he skidded, flew through the air and landed on his elbow. The race to the hospital was on. Ouch. And what about the other race? The one with your friends? They said that we could finish it off when I, when I get better. Well, they could just say you won that one, don't you think? First stop is the X-ray department, where a radiographer takes some X-rays to see what's going on with Yassine's troublesome elbow. OK, that's all done. Enter Dr. Ibra Majid. He's here with the results. What's the verdict, Dr. Ibra? This is your x-ray. You've broken your elbow and you need an operation, I think, to fix this. Oh, dear. Yassin won't be lifting a trophy for a while. He needs an operation because part of his bone has come away from where it's supposed to be. And the reason why it's moved off is because there's lots of muscles that are attached to this bone, which pulled the, the bone away. Look at that. That's a bit of loose bone. Tomorrow, do an operation where we'll push the bit of the bone that's broken back and with some wires fix it. It's really important that we fix this uh, because if we don't fix it, there's a risk that he can lose some function around his elbow. So, armed with this information, terrible joke, fair enough, Yassine goes back to the ward and gets a visit from his family. But his brother Hudefa is particularly worried about the operation. I might feel it because um, he is my twin brother. Ah, uh, yes, some twins think they can feel the other's pain. I think you'll be all right, because Yassine will be fast asleep during his operation. Speaking of sleep, I think it's about time your brothers and sisters left you to get some rest. Good luck, Yassine. Stay brief for tomorrow, yeah? Stay We'll be back later to find out how Yassine's operation goes. <laughs> We've got some amazing body tricks to show you. Want to find out how to shrink someone's arm? OK, Zand, I want you to put your fingertips together and push your arms out as far as you can in front of you, like that. This is a great trick. OK, now I want you to take that hand and rub it as hard as you can on this elbow. Now, tell your mate while they're doing this that you're going to use magic powers to shorten that arm. Ooh, I'm using my arm-shortening magic powers. Ooh. Not too much magic. OK, now straighten. You've shortened my arm. Exactly. Now, to get them back the same length, you simply do the opposite and rub this hand on that arm. More magic, more magic, and straighten. Yeah, that's better. Now, do you want to try it again? No, I won't be able to get my hands in my pockets. Don't be ridiculous, Sand. So, this trick works because as you rub your left arm, the muscles in the right shoulder tighten up, making your right arm look shorter. Your left arm is relaxed and completely untensed, so it looks longer. To get things back to normal, just give everything a shake. So give it a try and see if you can fool your friends. Back in Manchester is 11-year-old Akrima with a badly broken arm. Akrima was in PE. It was gymnastics and feeling like a pro, he took a run-up towards a bench and jumped... Perfect! Landed on his feet Beautiful. And then fell over and broke his arm. Yeah, really not good. The broken bones have changed the shape of a creamer's arm, and it's as bendy as a banana. 
Now it's time for his operation, where specialist surgeons will put his bones back in the right place. So, banana arm, get ready to be de bananified This is some sleepy medicine now. What would you dream about? Where's the nicest place we can have a little sleep? France, the Caribbean. It's a Blackpool. Blackpool? Yeah. OK, Blackpool it is. As soon as Akrina drifts off into dreamland, the surgical team will be able to get to work. And there you go. He's off to the sandy shores of Blackpool. To prevent Akrina's bones from healing in the wrong shape, the surgeons need to move them by hand back to where they should be. We just push this part of the forearm back straight up so that it lines up with this part of the forearm. Remember, he won't feel a thing. So, on your marks, get set. And there you go. A blink of an eye and the bone is back in the correct position. Everything looks good, but to be sure, they do another x-ray. Oh, beautiful. Not a hint of banana there. Now they plaster his arm in a cast so that the bone stays in position to knit together. A couple of hours later, a creamer is wide awake and the operation is a distant memory. Actually, it's barely a memory at all. I don't remember anything. I only remember when I, when I woke up. But it's good news. I don't have the banana arm anymore. It's gone. You must be starving, Akrima. Fancy a banana? Every time I eat a banana, I try not to think about uh, my own. Maybe stick to apples and oranges for a bit. Bye. <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to make your arms float all by themselves? Well, that's what this lot are trying to do. Come on, Pop, push harder. Believe it or not, their arms are rising up completely on their own. They're just like, Wee! It's making my hands move. When I go like this, it rises. I actually feel like my hands are rising up. That's quite weird. So how is this possible? And what do we do to make it happen? First, you need to push your hands against each other like this. With the person on the inside pushing out and the person on the outside pushing in. Do this really hard against each other for as long as you can. Then let go and the person with the arms on the inside needs to relax and then see what happens. Now, who thinks they can explain why it worked? If the person's putting pressure, like it's pushing, and then you're pushing really hard back, if they let go like really quickly and you're still pushing, your arms will just go like bounce and they'll go up. Well, Lorenzo is right. Because your arms are pushing so hard against your partners, when you stop, it takes your arms a little time to relax and realize that the force has gone and this is what makes your arms float. Right, so what happens is you're tensing all your muscles and then when you relax, the muscles that were tense are still pulling your arms up. So all these muscles that have been tense, you're relaxing the push in and the, the muscles that are on the outside of your arms are still quite tense and they're just making it feel like your arms are lifting up. He thinks Lorenzo's explanation was better. <laughs> OK, you're right. Lorenzo was better. This way to Older Hay Hospital in Liverpool, where 14-year-old Alex has hurt his arm. Ooh, it's bendy. What happened? Saved my ball, saved the goal and broke my arm. You broke your arm saving a goal? That must have been some kick. Let's see what happened. Alex was playing in a five-a-side football match at school. Was he magic with the ball like Messi? No, Zand, he was saving the ball like... Like... Like a brilliant goalkeeper, making lots of great saves, leaping left and right, then one boy, the strongest kicker on the pitch, took a shot. Whoa, that ball's moving like a rocket. On a one-way mission to the back of the net. But Alex had other plans. He threw his hands out for a save. The ball crashed right into his arm and bent it. Ouch. Alex is off to X-ray to check on the damage. That's brilliant. You're doing really well. <laughs> OK, hold well on. To deliver the results is bone specialist Dr Vinesh Selvaratnam. So, he's, what he's got, he's got a fracture of both the bones. He certainly has. What we're going to try and do, see whether we can give him something to just sedate him, give it a pull and put a plaster, OK? If this is successful, Alex won't need an operation. When a bone breaks, sometimes it moves out of its normal position. With a double break like Alex's, your arm can look bendy because the bones have overlapped. When this happens, they need to be pulled apart and then slotted back together like a jigsaw so they heal nicely. 
That's the plan for Alex. Let's see how he gets on later. Ouch. In Sheffield, eight-year-old Mason is in with what appears to be a broken arm, but he's no stranger to broken bones. Oh, I broke one of my arms twice and another ones, and I've broke both legs. So this is my fourth arm break now. You might be thinking Mason must be the most accident-prone boy around, but in fact, there's a good reason why he's broken so many of his bones. I've got a bone problem called polystatic fibrosis. Displacia, it's a tongue twister that. Certainly is. It means my bones can break really easily. So how did he manage to break his arm this time? Well, Mason was on his way home from school. He set off down the hill as usual, minding his own business, as usual, but he was distracted and didn't notice that the curb on the pavement was really high. High like a mountain? No, Zan, that would be ridiculous. It's a normal street. Anyway, as I said, he was distracted, and he went to step up. He had a momentary lapse of concentration. Whoa! I'm not surprised! Did you just see what I just saw? But before he knew it, he flew forward and landed smash right on his elbow. Ouch! Now Mason's off to X-ray to find out exactly what's going on. The bone condition Mason has is called fibrous dysplasia and it means the areas of his bones, which should be hard, are actually soft, meaning they can break more easily. And there's no denying Mason's got a bad break there. Over to another Dr Chris, Dr Christopher Beavis. So your x-ray shows you've got a fracture at the bottom of your humerus, which is your long bone here. What we need to do now is put a cast on it to hold your arm in that position and hopefully a lot less painful for you. The cast will stop the broken bone moving, but Mason will need an operation in the next few days to properly fix his arm. Putting a cast on with such a bad break can be painful, but don't worry, the nurse has got a couple of tricks up her sleeve. So we're going to give you some medicine, sweetheart, that you just have to squirt up your nose. After some painkillers squirted up his nose, there's some laughing gas. And take some good breath. Perfect. As you breathe laughing gas in, it numbs the pain receptors in your brain so that you can't feel a thing. Making things hurt a lot less and giving you a giggle along the way. <laughs> and it's not called laughing gas for no reason. <laughs> it seems to be contagious and can turn you into a stand-up comedian. Or a lie-down one, anyway. What's a hedgehog's favourite food? What's a hedgehog's favourite food? Prickled onions. <laughs> Prickled onions? Oh, dear, Mason. But the show's over, and with the cast on, Mason can go home until his operation. We'll be back later to find out how he gets on. We've got loads of amazing body tricks to show you, and with this one, your friends won't believe how strong you are. What are you doing? I've got my hand on my head. Take it off. Make me. Glued? I'll show you. It's very easy. Uh, OK, I'll get it off. This is a really great trick that you can do too on anyone, no matter how strong they are. You simply put your fingers on top of your head and press down. It's simple. Your bicep muscle is so strong, it locks into position, and no one can move it until you decide to relax it. I know what it is. My brother has developed superhuman strength. We know loads of fantastic body tricks to amaze and confuse your friends, like this one. This is a good trick. This is brilliant. You're really going to like this. So what I'm doing is I'm standing so my fingertips are just touching the wall. And then when I say so, Chris is going to move his arms around in a big circle and just try and touch the wall again. But I'm going to push the wall away from him. Go. Now your mates are going to think that their arms have shrunk. Whereas actually, I pushed the wall. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Frankly, I'm amazed this building is still standing. 
Of course, Zahn didn't really move the wall. When I rotated my arms around, the muscles in my shoulders tightened up, meaning I couldn't stretch my arms as far. Simple. Give it a try and see if you can fool your friend. In the accident and emergency department, the team are ready for their next case. Let's meet him. Heading into hospital with a sore and swollen elbow is four-year-old Joseph. Yes, that's you. I fell over. When he came home, he said he'd fell on his elbow. It was still hurting. So how did it happen? And it goes a little something like this. The break time bell rang at school, and Joseph ran outside ready for some fun. Nice gloves. A budding break dancer, he started busting some moves. Good eyebrow action. The footwork was flowing. The crowd were going crazy, gorilla included. When suddenly, Joseph tripped and landed on his arm. Ouch. He's been saying it's not eating him, but there's definitely something wrong with it. Break dancing isn't actually supposed to break anything, but it does look pretty swollen. Yep, I can see it. Thanks, Joseph. Let's get nurse practitioner Julia Maxted in to take a look. Are you going to tell me what you did again? I fell over. <laughs> Sure. Can you put your arms up in the air? He can't fully straighten his elbow and it's really quite swollen, so I think that he probably has actually broken something there. To find out for sure, Nurse Julia sends Joseph for an x-ray. It's the quickest way to spot a broken bone. An x-ray is like a super powerful version of ordinary life, which can pass through your skin. When they meet bones, x-rays stop dead in their tracks and the perfect picture can be taken. With his x-ray done, Joseph just has to wait calmly for the results. Whoa, 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 stop right there. Isn't this how you got yourself in this mess in the first place? Don't worry, the x-ray results are in. Oh, and it looks like there could be a cast on its way. He's got a little break just up here where, where he saw the bone's not out of place. It's just got a little break across it, and that's why it's swollen. But at least Joseph's earned himself a sticker. What does that say? I have been very brave. And he's come up with a <laughs> cunning plan. If my arm breaks, this one. Yes? I'll have two stickers. Well, your maths is good, but it's probably better to have two good arms than two good stickers. Someone plaster him up before he hatches any more harebrained plans. With a sling on, time for a finishing touch. Another sticker. I should put that, I should put it on there so everyone can see. There you go. What you say? All right, mate, no worries. Phew, and he didn't even have to break his other arm to get it. Bye bye. Bye. Back in accident and emergency, eight year old Mason is waiting for surgery on his broken arm. He'd been walking home from school as usual when he went to step up a big curb. But just as he lifted his leg, a momentary lapse of concentration caused him to trip and he fell smack onto his elbow. I've got my gown on, so it means it shouldn't be too long until we're going down to theatre. And it's not long. Mason has a general anaesthetic so that he won't feel a thing. <laughs> Over to surgeon Mr. James Fernandez. He's got a plan to put metal pins inside Mason's bone that will not only help the break heal, but will also protect the weak bone from breaking again. So with Mason fast asleep, it's time to get to work. First things first, a hole is made near to Mason's elbow for the first pin to go in. The metal pins the surgeon is using are flexible, so they can be pushed through the center of the bone. This might look painful, but Mason is totally unconscious and can't feel anything. The first pin is already in. Here comes number two. With both pins in place, the ends are cut off and the surgeon checks the elbow joint can still move normally. A few stitches and the operation's all over, but these pins will stay inside Mason's arm to keep the bone strong in future and, as he grows, they will expand too. Once he's come round from the anaesthetic, Mason's off to pick his new cast. Blue, red or black? As long as it's not pink and purple. <laughs> I'm going to say, you don't mind, I might put pink on. Black it is, then. It'll take around six weeks for Mason's bone to heal fully. But strapped up nicely and he's on his way home. Nice work, Mason. Bye! <laughs> In A&E, our next patient has had an unusual accident. Luckily, he's in the right place to get sorted. Feel you!
Let's see who's in Liverpool's accident and emergency waiting room. My name is Ben. This is Ruby. This is Scarlett. Nice to meet you. What's up? When I was climbing up the stairs with my socks off. Yes? It's the only way that I could get up there quicker. Right. I fell on the strong part of the slide and I broke my arm. That will do. It certainly will. Let's piece that together, shall we? Ben was having a good time playing in the fun park with his two sisters. He was running and climbing all over the place. Looks fun! But his socks were making him slip, so he took them off. Ew, could be smelly. No, Zan, that's your feet. Anyway, sockless Ben climbed even higher. But on the way up, he slipped and slammed his arm. Ouch! After a quick trip to X-ray, the next stop is minor injuries. Where nurse practitioner Sarah Jackson is waiting. Now have a look at your hand then. Be careful, though. I will be very careful. Nurse Sarah carefully checks that Ben's arm is working properly. Can you wiggle your fingers for me? And have you had a picture? Yeah, two oh, pictures. Two pictures. Should we go and have a little look and see what you've done? Yeah. Then she checks his x-rays. Looking at the x-ray, I saw two small buckle fractures. That's those bulges there. What we're going to do is we're going to pop him in a splint. He needs to keep the splint on for three weeks, OK? And What's a splint? It's like a magic plaster. Magic? This goes on your hands, OK? Now Ben gets his splint on, this supports his arm and keeps it straight while his bones heal. And we're out to go to school like this. Yeah, you have to school like that. With that answered, he's off. Have you learned anything today, Ben? I'm going to be more careful with my arm. Glad to hear it. Be quiet, girls. Well sorted, Ben. Bye, Bye girls. Bye, Bye ben. ben.